Okay, Jim. Oh, good morning, everybody. Y'all happy to be here in the house of God? Amen. All right. Uh, Kayla, would you show us up in a word of prayer? Okay, today we're going to talk about something that has been running rampant in the world today. And everybody has it, everybody's gone through it, and we're going to see what the Bible says about anger. And in, these day, in today's time, anger has really been prevalent. Uh, look what happened in Atlanta. Now they're saying that that was a hate crime when the guy that they captured said something totally different. I know that for a fact because I asked my daughter because she's a cop down there. She would know. He was telling us he did it because of another reason, not because he was angered at the Asians, but he, well, I'll just go ahead and say it. he did it because of a sexual reason. And he got angry over something about it and went in there and started shooting the places up. Now, each person shows their anger differently. This guy showed it by shooting up a place. Uh, but everyone gets angry. We know that. You just don't, you, some people, you just don't want to see their anger. Some of the emotion boils and stews inside them, and for others, it results as a fist through the sheetrock. These emotions of displeasure are part of how we are created. It is part of our design. Anger was never intended. However, to turn to sin or to control our lives. We can allow anger to drive us into sin and control us. Um, in a lot of cases, since where mom used to have this saying, you can get a whole lot more done with honey than you can with vinegar. So you know, if somebody's angry at you, you just smile and say, hey, come down, you know. But since we were created in the image of God, we have had many character traits that our creator has. Anger is one of them. Although he would never sin with his anger, God got angry a lot of times. He got angry with Moses. In Deuteronomy 137, it says, Also the Lord was angry with me for your sakes, saying, Thou also shalt not go in thither. Where Moses was at, God didn't want him to go there. And Moses did it anyhow, and that's what angered God. He got angry at the people of Israel many times including at Mount Horeb. In uh, Deuteronomy 8, 9, 8, he says, Also the Herod, ye provoked the Lord to wrath, so that the Lord was angry with you to have destroyed you. God was angry at them for what they did on that mountain. And in 2 Kings 17, 18, it goes, Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel, now that's something unusual for God to be angry at Israel because Israel's his chosen people. Although our children are our chosen people and sometimes we get angry at them. The people of Israel was God's children. I see you over there smirking, Ann. It said, uh, therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight there was none left but the tribe of Judah only. He wiped them out. All of them but the tribe of Judah. Just get rid of them. And sometimes as parents want to do the same thing with some of our kids. But we love them so much we don't do it. That's the reason why a lot of times uh, as parents we discipline them and the kids think, Oh, man, they're so mad at me. Why did they take it away? And in mine and Alan's case, 
It wasn't nothing being taken away but some hide off her backside. Right, Alan? So, there's not many different ways of discipline. But you can do discipline without anger. When you do it with anger, then it becomes beatings. And we've seen in the news some of that has happened in the world. Matter of fact, it's happening more frequently now than it has in the past. He was angry at Aaron. And the Lord was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him. And I prayed for Aaron also at the same time. Deuteronomy 9.20. Aaron, Aaron was Moses' uh, mouthpiece, you might want to say. He did a lot of speaking for Moses. And something, Moses did say something that God wasn't happy with and was going to wipe him away. And Moses said, Lord, no, let him stay. And he did. He got mad at Solomon in 1 Kings 11, 9. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord, God of Israel, which had appeared to him twice. God came to Solomon twice and both times turned his back on him. And in today's time with the anger that people have, a lot of them think, well, I'm going to just stay angry because y'all turn my, your back to us. Well, some people are so afraid of anger that they will do that. It's a, an instinct that they do. They, when they get into a situation where there's a lot of angry people, they want to back out. Yeah, that could be very serious. And he gets angry with those sinning. Now that is a good one. God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked. Every day, Psalms 7, 11. And Psalms 84 says, O God of hosts, how long, how long thou be angry against the prayer of thy people? People were praying forgiveness for their sins. And for a long time there, God stayed angry with them. And sometimes as parents, we do the same thing with our kids inadvertently. They do something wrong and <clears throat> the punishment stays longer than normal. I see Alex over there just shaking the head, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. We can't help that. A lot of times you just can't help it. Even Jesus was angry enough to throw the corrupt money changers out of the temple. And everybody knows that story. They come, he comes into the temple and here's these people selling things to earn money in what would be, was supposed to be a house of God. And when he had made a scourge of some small cords, he drove them out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. <clears throat> he just went on through there like a tirade, flipping the tables over, knocking the money off, shooting the goats and the oxen out of there. And he's, they asked him, what are you doing this for? And he told them, what's that on the coins? And they said, Julius you Caesar. And he tell them, render unto Caesar what is Caesar, but render unto God what is God's. God's chosen men also got angry. And we know that. Uh, Moses, <clears throat> one of the men most used by God. I mean, look what he did. He brought the 12 tribes of Israel out of the land of Egypt. And Moses diligently sought the goat of the sin offering, and behold, it was burnt. And he was angry with El Eleazar and Ithamar, the sons of Aaron, 
which were left alive, saying, that was Leviticus 10, 16. The boys didn't do right on the off burnt offering, and Moses got upset with them. Nehemiah 5, 6. And I was very angry when I heard their cry and these words. It happens. Parents do the same thing. Jonah. But this pleased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. He got angry at Jonah because he told Jonah to go to Nineveh. And Jonah said, I don't really want to go there. Because Nineveh at that time was so evil, it made Las Vegas look like a birthday party. That's how bad it was. But eventually, what? Uh, I was just trying to get Kane's attention. Turn number six. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was wondering what's going on here. I was wondering if Dr. Cash was making faces at me. No. <laughs> I was photo bombing. Oh, okay. <laughs> but everybody gets angry at one point or another. But it's how we control it and how, what the Bible says about it. In all the situations that God was angry, sin was never involved. Anger is not a sin. Everybody get that straight now. Anger is not a sin. It's an emotion. When it is directed toward the things that should be anger us, it also gets God's angry, our God angry. It is not a sin if you find yourself angry at unrighteousness in government. Oh, Lord, that, that is so true. Right now, that is so true. And the death of millions of aborted babies and the theft of property or other sinful activities. Anger is sin when it is used for jealous, prideful, or selfish reason. If you're using it to benefit yourself, then it's a sin. But if you're angry at the government for what they're doing, it's not a sin. It, that's a very thin line right there. You just gotta be careful that you don't cross over it. Although some of them, back on January 6th, I believe had crossed that line into doing sin. Needless to say, we should not want to get angry and should avoid it at all costs. Being angry at sin, but not at the sinner. Jerry Falwell used to say, hate the sin, but love the sinner. I mean, you can talk to the sinner and, and try to straighten it out what they're doing, convince them it's wrong. But we are all not supposed to sin. But a lot of us daily probably does it without really knowing about it, knowing they actually did it. And that's the reason why you should always pray to God for forgiveness. It should be the last measure of handling a situation. Some biblical reasons for not getting angry are, remember that God was angry with you, but he turned, he turned his anger away from you and forgave you. God will always forgive you. No matter what you do, God will forgive you. The problem is in this day and time, man will not. They will carry the grudge on and on, and, and the more they carry it, the angrier they get. If you have trusted Christ as your Savior, think of all the times he forgave and forgot about your transgressions against him. If he can turn his anger away from you, he certainly does not have to Cannot we forgive and forget what the person has done to us? Are you not glad that you did not receive what was due to you for your sin against the Creator? 
because of our sin, he, he, he could have wiped us all out and started all over. He knew when he made the world and, and made man and all, he knew what was going to happen. But the first sin did not happen here on earth. It happened in heaven with Lucifer. And he could have, could have done away with him and wiped out the world and then started all over, but he didn't. And in that day, thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee through thou was angry with me and thine anger is turned away and thou comfortest me, Isaiah 12, 1. <clears throat> and Ephesians 4, 32 says, And be ye kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Somebody crossed your path, made you angry. But now you need to forgive them. Uh, as they used to say when I was younger, forgive and forget. This day and time, they don't forgive and they definitely don't forget. I mean, yes, we remember what happened on 9-11. That angered the whole country. But we got to remember what happened on that day. What was the cause of it? And in anger, we retaliated. And now, some of them are retaliating against us or retaliating against them. Where does it end? One side gets angry, the other attacks them, and then back and forth, back and forth. That carries on and on. And it can go down through generations. And as example, the world famous feud between the Hatfields and the McCoys. That lasted for generations. All because one of them said something bad about the other. And it just carried on until a Hatfield and a McCoy got married and kind of brought them together. There were still some anger moments there now, some, some of the older members of the families still had anger issues toward the other. But now, majority of them get along just well because they got rid of the anger. Because you will do something foolish and you probably will regret it, yeah. A lot of times in anger, we do some foolish things. He that's soon angry Deal is foolishly, Proverbs 14, 7. Because no one likes angry people, sinful anger creates a bad testimony for a Christian. And that's where that fine line I was talking about earlier comes in at. Where the anger versus the sin part of anger. In Proverbs 14, 17, it says, And a man of wicked devices is hated. Well, it probably get a lot of people angry at me, but we have a man of wicked devices in the White House. And these people are blind to it. A lot of people get so angry, they're blind to what's going on around them. Because no one wants to be, be near angry people it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. I'm not sure if I should address that one too much. <laughs> hmm. Well, I was always told to be fearful of an angry woman. I am quite sure that no one wants to live in the same house with an angry man either. Yeah, well, some women don't because in this day and time, the angry man beats on the woman. And in some cases, the woman 
is so fearful of the man that she will not call the cops on him. She'll make excuses. Oh, I fell down the steps or I, I ran into the door. They come up with stories like that. Unless you actually see him fall down the steps or get hit by the door. I mean, I've, I've gone, tried going into a house and got smacked by the door. It doesn't feel good. But some of these women, they do find the strength to go and tell somebody about it. Although it, it happened to my sister one time and if it wasn't for my mom, I'd probably be in jail right now because the guy was beating on my sister. And I come flying into the driveway and locked the brakes up through the yard and tore up the yard. And I jumped out of the car heading for the door and mom stopped me because I was going to rip his head off. Then I found out I didn't need to. My sister already did. <laughs> mm. Because no one should be friends with angry people. God commands us not to be. He knows that anger can spread from them to you. Anger is like a disease. Might as well say it's similar to the coronavirus. There is a cure to it. And that's prayer. But it will spread like a disease. And as an example... It started with one person on January 6th. One person anger toward the elections. Fired everybody up. And now the FBI is looking for hundreds of people to bring them to court for what they did. They were wrong for what they did but I can understand where they were coming from. The things like that happen on a daily basis. You just got to learn to control your anger. For a long time there, I had a very bad temper, didn't I, Kayla? I mean, I was really bad with it. I, I ended up calling it the Incredible Hulk Syndrome because I would get so mad that I could move just about anything. And it got me in trouble. It got, got me in trouble a lot of times. But I learned to control it with God's help. I'm going to say this one last verse and then we'll finish the, the rest of this up next week. But it says, make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Proverbs 22, 24. They don't want you to make friends with an angry man who won't get over with it. If you can talk him down and get him to see straight and get rid of the anger, then you can make friends with him. But if he won't calm down and continues on, See you later. God don't want you to make friends with him. Because why? Like I said earlier, it's like a disease. It'll spread and keep on spreading. So we're going to stop right there and finish up the rest of this next week. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear most gracious heavenly Father, thank you for this lesson. And Lord, thank you that we are learning how to control our anger, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that whoever's seeing this and hearing this, that if they are angry about something, that they will learn from what I'm saying. I ask all that in Jesus' name. Amen.